we're talking about Damietta. Usually young people in Damietta um, um, asked for financial support to start their own small or medium enterprise in the field of uh, furniture. And uh, they will get a loan and start their project. But we said, okay, why don't we just follow the opposite approach, which is to uh, set up a city for manufacturing furniture where 2,000 um, uh, look at 2,000 uh, uh, enterprise would be scientifically designed and uh, to learn from the experiences of other countries to make huge change in the field of furniture manufacturing in Egypt scientific studies and in this city there will be only one committee responsible for uh, deciding which equipments are appropriate uh, to be used in the furniture city and uh, I want to tell you that I always choose to select or to go through the difficult road not the easy one but why because this would lead to good results. I, show, I saw the experience of 2,000 factories that has been there for 15 years. We are following a complete integrated approach. If this furniture city is established in uh, Damietta in the same place you will find you will find training and rehabilitation center and you will find also the needed advanced equipment and everything will be made available uh, it will be an integrated city even with medical services if there is any need for it if uh, 5,000 or 4,000 young, um, uh, young men from Damietta go to the city and start to work. We sent, by the way, a committee to see how Chinese and uh, other countries are doing in this field and in other fields as well. If it is possible to make the same approach on uh, carpet industry if uh, there are a possibility uh, if there is a possibility to set up um, a center for local industries another track is uh, to help young people to do their own uh, projects i've talked about is because they really need a momentum from us and i'm talking here very frankly they need a stronger momentum. I have talked a lot about how we prepare our field. Do you think he's happy? Do you think he's really enjoying his public work or is he suffering? What do I mean by public uh, work, uh, meaning, for example, uh, a governor, a minister. Don't you think that uh, I'm here, I'm not defending anyone, to be clear. I'm not defending anyone. And uh, I don't want to defend anybody here. But While dealing with the situation our country is going through, have we forgotten that we are facing real difficult circumstances and it has been so difficult for so many years? In Alexandria, when uh, uh, the um, uh, shower rains uh, did fall, how do you expect that things will go smoothly? All of us should uh, know how did we deal with this situation. No one said that 
that if there are 60,000 buildings constructed in Alexandria outside the urban planning, uh, what would be the situation of uh, the sanitation system with those 60,000 uh, unplanned for buildings? By the way, in the past five years, things went out of control, and this is very natural. But we have to be aware of the fact that what we are seeing nowadays is the accumulation of so many years and also the past five years. But are we going to leave the situation as is? No. In all Alexandria streets at 4 a.m., the rain started. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, the rain started to fall at 12 noon, but by 4 a.m. day, all streets were completely dry. And I want to tell you that I was talking to officers in small villages, and everything was completely dry, and the rain stopped at 4 a.m. So. It took only two days. The whole situation continued for two days only. Why? I am telling you this because I want to tell everyone that you have to deal with the, the situation with the, the needed understanding and the needed awareness. One of the people of the media, uh, a presenter in one of the programs was saying that the president is meeting with the Siemens company and is not giving attention to what's happening in Alexandria. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable. He was saying that the president is not giving any attention to Alexandria and is meeting with the Siemens company. This is not acceptable and this is not appropriate at all. It's not appropriate to do this to one another. Why are you torturing me to be in this position? Are you torturing me because I'm assuming this position? Are you uh, torturing me because I have assumed this position and this post? I feel that people do not know anything, do not understand anything. And uh, they are just talking in front of the microphone. No, please. It's a state, it's a country that we are going to lose if we spread ignorance and lack of awareness amongst people. We are not spreading real awareness as if uh, things are solved through pushing a button here or there. And. Uh, you are saying that we are facing many disasters. What about the media? Don't you think that this uh, sector is facing a disaster as well or what? Is it uh, because you want to say something? You will do this to your country? No. Bear in mind, please bear in mind, because this is not in our own interest. Uh, I am not uh, angry at all, but I just want to tell you that this is not the appropriate approach. And I will tell everyone listening to me, you've been listening to me talking for two years. Please tell me, whom did I insult? Please give me one sentence or one phrase that included uh, an inappropriate word against anyone, even the people who criticize us and talk badly about us and conspire against us. So, please bear in mind at this point. Next time, I will complain to the Egyptian people. That was as far as Alexandria is concerned. What about the elections? The role of the country or the role of the state in election? 
means uh, is to do two things. Number one, to secure uh, the uh, election process uh, so that voters will go uh, uh, in uh, security and uh, please allow me to extend my thanks to the police and to the military for the role they have played but uh, uh, we need to continue because there are other phases of the elections and the second role of the state is to guarantee the transparency of the election process but uh, the uh, political process is really important for our experience elections are really important for our experience what we are going through is an Egyptian experience you will find in it, uh, many positives and many good things and uh, other things are not uh, equally positive I will not call them negatives but uh, the, neg the positives that you expect will not be always found. I was asking the Ministry of Interior how many elections we have organized in the past five years. He said approximately eight or nine uh, elections. So this is number one. Probably they got bored. The second thing is, let's see the turnout in uh, the different uh, parliamentary elections in different countries of the world and compare it to the turnout in the Egyptian parliamentary elections. And let's see, where do we stand? After this, we are going to have uh, a parliament. And now we have started uh, to see political uh, parties uh, being formed. Uh, and uh, this uh, parliament will play a monitoring and legislative role. So some people were asking, why did President Sisi invite voters to go and cast their ballots? Because this is our interest. This is why I invited Egyptians to go and cast their ballot. Because my main interest is our country. My only interest is the interest of our country. When I invite and urge and call upon citizens to vote, yes, of course, I have to do so. Who said that they didn't vote? Uh, those who voted, I thank them, and those who didn't, I urge them, please, to go next time. So, the challenges facing us are much bigger than this, and please, let the objective or the target is to keep and protect and defend our country. I wanted to talk about awareness and media, and I think it will be enough. I told you, uh, to all the people of the media who are with us or, uh, or those who are listening to us, don't uh, make people lose hope. Sometimes I go through different channel, uh, channels and I listen. If there is no hope, what next? What next if there is no hope? Public servants or senior officials who are responsible for a ministry or a governorate, how would they work within such environment? I told you we are facing so many challenges. So awareness. And the media, please, awareness and media, uh, please do something good for our country. And again, I'm telling you, we have been in office for 16, 17 months, not 16 or 17 years. And uh, uh, this is really good. I'm not giving the impression that uh, we might stay for 16 or 17 years, no. I just want to tell you that uh, what has been achieved is really great and in one or two years you will see concrete uh, results on the ground that will make us happy and satisfied. But please, my final request to you, please do not disagree with each other, all of you, people of the media, institutions of the country, Egyptians together, 
please. We are living only on 5 or 6 percent of the area of our country, and 95 percent of Egypt's area is not yet populated. So please, bear in mind this, and please don't disagree with each other. I want also to talk about the efforts we are exerting at the level of uh, foreign policy. Egypt is going through exceptional circumstances, uh, at least even after the 30th of uh, uh, June. And uh, the uh, other countries or the world will not come to know us or to ask us. We need to go to them to introduce ourselves to them and to tell them what we have. And I want to tell you that uh, the efforts we exerted brought back to Egypt its status to a great extent. When I asked uh, 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 others to take certain steps to solve other problems. Uh, I here want to refer to a very clear policy that we have always been adopting, which is never to interfere in the affairs of others and to respect the will of other countries and never to conspire against anyone. And these are the fixed facts of the Egyptian uh, policy. But what about those who conspire against us. We will be patient and uh, no one with the help of God Almighty would be capable of uh, uh, getting uh, anything from Egypt uh, because of the noble and respectable values that we uphold and that we adopt in all our relations with other countries. Our values, our principles, uh, um, guide us and and uh, I uh, many people were said uh, why do you travel a lot uh, I just wish if they just mind their own business It was necessary to uh, travel and to take uh, these moves and uh, uh, please rest assured and at the end, uh, long live Egypt, long live Egypt. Together, the uh, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Sisi speech during the culture seminar of the armed forces. President Abdel Fattah Sisi has talked about many issues, whether political or economic. He has talked mainly about fighting terrorism in Sinai and how to defend the Egyptian borders. This, in addition to what happened in Alexandria and the Egyptian efforts to face the floods that took place in Alexandria. President Abdel Fattah Sisi also talked about the economic challenges that are facing Egypt right now. He had talked about um, the SMEs and the role of investment at this very sensitive and current period. The President also talked about that we have accomplished a lot concerning security and stability and the army operations in Sinai are targeting terrorists and we're all keen to achieve development with security. The President said that we have managed to solve the electricity problem and by the end of November factory gas needs will be solved. We need to develop transporting goods through railways. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has also talked about the Egyptian foreign relations and how to enhance those foreign relations with the countries at this very critical period. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi have also talked about the role of the media in spreading awareness at this very sensitive time and how to give the information to the people without being biased to uh, any side.
Ladies and gentlemen, this was President Abdel Fattah Sisi's speech during the 20th Culture Seminar of the Armed Forces. He has talked about many issues, as I mentioned, whether political or economic. We will tell you more about those issues in our top stories uh, at 5 p.m. car local time. So please do stay tuned in for more coming up in Nile TV International. Be the first to know. The news live at the site of the event. Information on events as they are happening. If it's breaking news, it's Nile TV. For ads on Nile TV, Egyptian Radio and Television Union, the economic sector, info at nileinternational.net or call us on the following numbers. Have you got a good story? Get in touch with Nile TV. Send us your videos pictures and stories email us on our website contact us on Facebook follow us on Twitter and also Google Plus be part